my name is Carolyn, and today we're going to be talking about soldering. Soldering is a really useful skill, especially in electronics. Soldering allows you to join multiple wires together. So, when doing electronics, a preferred solder is often 4060 lead tin solder with a rosin core. So, the solder is actually a hollow metal, and inside that metal there is a rosin core, and that rosin core allows the solder to flow more easily, as well as preventing oxidation of the solder. So because there's lead in the solder, we should be sure not to touch our face while we're working with it. We should also not have food or beverages in your working space, and for sure wash your hands when you're done working with the solder. So we typically do soldering with an iron that has a sharp tip. So this iron here, a lot of the times, this iron has a stand, but you're not always going to have a stand on the irons. It's just fine. You can set us them on the table like this. Uh, also, most soldering irons are adjustable. They're somewhere in between 20 and 40 watts. And the temperature of the soldering iron is going to differ based on the type of project that you're doing. Uh, many people like to have some type of way to clean their soldering iron. I have a wet sponge here. If you don't have a wet sponge, that's fine. You can use a newspaper. Many people prefer, prefer this. Before you solder, you need to strip the end of a wire. To do this, you can use a couple different utensils. Here are two different wire strippers. Uh, this one, you actually have the different sizes of the wire. Then you'll put the wire within this and strip it. And then one over here, you can adjust the size of the wire which you want to use. So I'm going to use this one. So when you strip a wire, you normally want to strip between a half an inch and three-fourths of an inch off. To do this, you're just going to put the wire through, clamp down, Get a good grip on the other end and pull. And then this is what a strip wire would look like. Before we solder two wires together, we must first mechanically join the wires in place. I'm going to demonstrate three common methods of mechanically joining stranded wires. So the first method is one of the easiest, and that's called the pigtail splice. All we do is cross the wires over one another, and then we turn, and it ends up making something that looks a little bit like a pigtail. The second type of way to join wires is called the inline splice. For the inline splice, we bring two wires in line with one another, like this, and then we turn in opposite directions. And that looks like that one is finished. And then finally, the third type of joining wires is called the fan method. And in this method, we fan out the strands of each wire on both sides, like this. And then we carefully bring these stranded parts together so that the fans overlap. And then we do the same thing we did in the inline splice, so turning it in opposite directions. Now this is called the fan method. It's very similar to the inline splice. When soldering, you will want to hold your wires in place. So one way to do this is to bend your wires into a convenient position and then put heavy objects to help hold them in place. So that would be doing something like this. So alternatively, you can use a device called a helping hand. That's what I'm going to use in my demonstrations. So a helping hand is really nice because it not only has this magnifying glass that helps me to better see what I'm working on, it also has these two alligator clips that can be bent around and used to hold the wire in place. So I'm going to use the helping hand in my soldering demonstration today. The first part about soldering is tinning the soldering iron. Tinning the soldering iron is the idea of applying a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron. The purpose of tinning the soldering iron is to allow for better heat transfer between the hot iron and the piece that you wish to solder as well as preventing oxidation of the soldering iron tip. So to tin, what you're going to do is you're just going to apply a little bit of solder onto the tip of the iron like this. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply another little additional ball of solder and that'll aid the heat transfer between the soldering iron and our piece which I'm going to solder now. So when I wish to solder, I'm going to move the soldering iron and I'm going to directly press it to the piece I wish to solder. I'm going to hold it in one spot, that's important, keep your soldering iron in one spot, and allow the soldering iron to heat up the metal you wish to solder really well. So just leave it here for a little bit. After the wire is nice and hot, you're going to put the solder onto the wire. You're not going to touch the solder to the soldering iron, but you're just going to touch the wire. 
If the wire is hot enough, it should just flow right into the wire. You can move the solder around to thoroughly coat the entire wire. When you're done, if you do a good job, you should still be able to see the pattern of the wire. So you shouldn't have lots of extra balls or globs on top of the piece that's soldered. Finally, to prevent shorts in the electric circuit and make your project look nicer, we're going to coat the soldered regions with heat shrink. Heat shrink is also great at hiding a lot of sins you might have had when soldering. So, when you choose a heat shrink tubing, you need to make sure that you understand the heat shrink is going to shrink when you use it. It can shrink anywhere from about two times to five times the initial diameter, so you need to choose the right size heat shrink to use with your given size wire. So after you choose and cut your heat shrink, make sure you cut it a little longer than the piece that you want to cover because heat shrink will shrink. You're going to hide the, slide the heat shrink tubing over the soldered region, which is what I'm doing right now. And then you're going to need to heat this up to shrink it. A lot of people use a hot air gun to shrink the heat shrink. I don't have a hot air gun. Also, a lot of people prefer to use a lighter or candle instead. So I'm going to use a candle to shrink my heat shrink. The reason I'm choosing to use a candle instead of a lighter is that that way I have both hands available. So to shrink the heat shrink, I'm just going to slide it in and out of the flame while rotating. Now that you have an intro to soldering, go have fun, solder lots of things, and remember at the end to always wash your hands.